I think what I want to do is movement and a workout, but I want to give you guys just some foundational principles of training to consider that I've used for myself and that I can tell you how I personally have put it all together and do a complete program. And uh, yeah, and then we can do any questions that you want. Did you have one? No? <laughs> I keep thinking you put up your hand. Oh, no, I keep, yeah, I keep oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, sound good? Cool. Um, so the first thing is that as we train, really take note of those three qualities, like awareness, openness, strength. How are you feeling the movement? How are you letting go of the tension as well? Um, the goal is to really maintain it throughout the entire workout and then not only maintain it through the workout, maintain it all day long. That's where the posture throughout the day comes into play. Um, we spoke about the like lengthen upwards, relax downwards, breathe outwards. There was this day in Bali years ago, my business partner and I were there and we're sitting at this table working and I'm like doing this with my neck, like my neck's all jacked up and I, I look over at him and he's also like this, like we're both <laughs> doing this thing at the computer. And we've been doing this, I don't know, years and years at this point. And so we're both complaining of all these like neck and shoulder issues. And I found this body worker in Bali who is really skilled and he goes there and then immediately I go in after him and she looks at me and she's like, oh, you've got the same shit as he did. He's like, you guys don't understand that you can meditate an hour a day or do yoga or whatever you want, but if the other 23 hours of the day, you're sitting like this, you're never going to get better. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, true, right? Obviously. Um, so really just try to maintain the posture and the awareness and the openness and the stability of your body throughout the whole day. Notice how you're carrying your body throughout the day. Okay. We spoke about also balance in planes of motion and in energy systems. So does everybody know what I mean by that? Planes of motion, horizontal pushing, horizontal pulling, vertical pushing, vertical pulling, elbow flexion, elbow extension. Um, same with like knee extension, knee flexion, um, you know, pressing, same thing, hip hinging. So the basic motion of the body should be trained in balance and the energy systems of the body, strength, cardio, um, and flexibility as well. And so I'll get into how to do that in a sec. Also really useful for me the past year has been training all of the smaller connecting points in the body. And what I realized by smaller co connecting points, I mean like the knee joint itself, the ankle joint, grip, uh, neck even as well. What I noticed, I started doing, uh, does anybody do backward sled dragging? Simon, nobody else? So I had Basically, like it was completely my fault, but I tore a, a ligament in one of my knees or, or at least severely strained it and it hasn't healed. And my knees felt really, really unstable for a number of years now. We were doing, uh, my former partner and I flew these two yoga teachers to Vancouver one year and basically had them teach us yoga for six hours a day for two weeks because we thought we'd like master yoga in two weeks. It's a stupid idea. And I was trying so hard to sit in lotus posture that I literally just by the end of the two weeks, I pushed my knee down and just felt this tear. <laughs> so it's like, oh my God. So really, really dumb. But since then my knee had felt really unstable and I started doing backward sled dragging just earlier. Uh, well, this time last year and almost immediately, like within a few days of doing this regularly, I noticed my entire lower body, my, my legs felt so much more stable. There was actually less fear in my system. 
Like there was less of a fear response in my nervous system because of the stability of my, of my knees. So everyone here has probably had ankle injuries as well. Like I've had loads of ankle injuries and a big part of that as I've gotten older is that my ankles feel really, really unstable. And I'll even have sort of deja vu of like rolling my ankle from time to time. And so I started doing like tibialis raises. Have you guys seen these? And using a, a monkey foot to train the ankle in a weighted way. And again, the same thing happens. Like my ankles, knees feel so much more stable. And the point I'm getting at is the nervous system dramatically decreases this, the fear response if it feels stable. So if your body's unstable, there's going to naturally be way more of a, a sort of anxiety and a guardedness, a defensiveness. The body will shut down because it knows one of the joints is weak. Mm -hmm. um, I had like a really like I within like the like a month I sprained my ankle like twice, like really bad. And so it's like to the point where I could barely walk. And like it's super like it's healthy now and it actually like helped me because like i unlocked like my hips my glutes and all that so like my lower body is actually like a lot healthier yeah but like even like every time like I, whether it's i step on a basketball court or like i'm just like walking down the stairs or something all i can think about is just like yeah i told you that like i'm like scared to get on the trampoline because i feel like i'm gonna jump once and just you know yeah I mean? so like this like the the confidence there is like yeah there. does anybody else have that or experience that i did for a bit yeah yeah, I mean, I would say at least once a day, I get that same sort of deja vu, like fear response. Yeah. And it's gotten much better through just getting stronger feet and ankles. And you could kind of psychoanalyze that and try to think your way out of it. Mm -hmm. Better way is just to make the joint stronger so your body doesn't respond. Mm -hmm. And I've begun to pat like pattern that into my training as a result, like make all of the connecting points, everything as strong as possible so that the body just feels stable and then it doesn't need to respond in fear. Mm -hmm. Cool, Merrick. Mm -hmm. um, the other one we kind of spoke about is incremental progress and what I've learned to, to do for myself is just slow that down it's not don't make progress. There should be some sort of progression between workouts, but it doesn't happen, have to happen every workout, meaning increase in reps, increase in weight. It doesn't have to happen every workout, but it should over the long term increase gradually. And so really be shooting for like complete recoveries between workouts. And um, complete recovery means you actually get a little bit better. And then the volume increases, the load increases, and over time that goes up, right? But it's not like I'm gonna put 100 pounds on my squat if you're, if you're squatting in a summer, you know? Because if you really, really, really tried, you probably could. But that would have this downstream effect on all the other qualities of the body that would ultimately result in less function. What do you think about um when you're saying make sure you have a complete recovery between workouts, you're talking more about lifting because like me personally, I'll lift like three days a week, but then I'll also every day, like either play pick up basketball or do like Muay Thai or Jiu Jitsu or something. So I'm definitely not recovered from the lifting for those classes, but I'll fully recover between my lifting sessions. And classes. Yeah. From the same workout to the same workout. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that may not happen with like skill development, like uh, martial arts, for example, it's not really the same thing, um, but when there's a, a quantitative, like this many reps on this set, you want more or less a full, you don't want to be going backwards from one to the next. Um, what I do is, well, I'll say this first. Again, don't generate tension you can't let go of is the big key don't generate tension you can't let go of. So if your workouts are leaving you with a whole bunch of tension in your body, something needs to be adjusted so that you're letting go of that. Um, we'll get into some ways of doing that, but it 
needs to be accounted for up front in that you're not pushing a whole bunch of tension into the muscle and through just like excessive ego building weightlifting. Um, who has one of those G swing machines? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's one way to do it. There's also just, um, like loaded stretching. We'll do some of that. That's been a huge win for me. Um, the lying down 10 by 10 breathing, whatever calms your nervous system, but also allows you to relax your physical body. Um, that should be done pretty much after every lifting workout for sure. And then the way that I organize, um, The way that I organize things, first take into account what your specific goal is. So does anybody have a goal that kind of go is more specialized, like goes beyond just function and health? Uh, yeah, I want to get like a boxing fight, like a boxing match. You want to get a boxing match? Yeah, so that, that's a bit more specialized. But again, the same principles do apply. You would just tweak this. Um, I'll just share what I do, but I'll, I'll tell each of you, like it, it is adjustable based on your goals. And um, we can talk about how to do that. Um, I just need to work more on movement and agility for dads, I think. I don't, I don't yeah. know if that's too specialized. It's just glorified cardio. I mean, not really. I would imagine that the training for dance is dance, yeah. probably. Like, I don't, I don't know if you need agility drills or something you could try, but yeah. Um, yeah. So the way that I do it is I train every day days off happen, but I let them happen organically. And I, on day one, do movement and, and strength. So the movement work that we do out there, the dynamic Qigong strength work, and then something to release the tension. And then the alternate day, I'll do cardio and then hot, cold. So usually for me, that's like sauna and cold shower. You could do sauna and cold plunge. Um, and I also, in addition to that, will do movement similar to what we do. Maybe not the full thing, but I'll do shorter versions of that when I wake up in the morning. And then at least a couple times throughout the day, I'm doing like you know, three to five minutes of movement just to keep energy open. It's like physical hygiene basically throughout the day. Um, in between work, like if you work for an hour or whatever, 45 minutes and 90 minutes, in between work would be a really good time for five minutes to do like the unwinding stretch, hopping, bouncing, whatever. But the point is keep your body open and keep energy moving. There's the classical um, Qigong medicine quote is like stagnant stuck chi equals pain, illness, and dysfunction. Smooth chi equals health, performance, happiness. And it's like kind of that simple at a foundational level. So again, keep it moving and smooth. Yeah. When you talk about cardio, do you mean like a static cardio, like running for 40 minutes, or do you mean like maybe doing some interval sprints, etc.? So I, do, I typically just do steady state. I think it would probably be better to do at least once a week, like VO2 max type training, sort of like what we did the other day. That would be more of a maximum output. But um, for me, it's usually like 30 to 45 minutes of either running or um, this summer, like the Canadian fires were so bad that the air was bad so I was just doing elliptical and the point with the point with the cardio too is I discounted it I discounted it for so long just because I was like well I'm not a runner I don't want to lose fat or lose weight I like what's the point of doing cardio for me and when I started doing it I realized the point is that it strengthens the entire cardiovascular system, which is like massively important for so many things, not only your health, but literally like blood carries chi and chi carries the blood. 
So if you're strengthening the vascular system, everything else in your body is just going to operate and function so much better. And uh, it also increases just general capacity. So I was better at work. Like I got tired less often at work. I, I could work more, longer hours. Um, yeah, it increased everything across the board. So you do three lifting sessions and two cardio sessions a week? I just alternate the two. Oh, yeah, so three and three basically. Yeah, and then sometimes a day off happens and, or maybe I train seven days that week. I don't, I don't keep it super rigid. I just train every day and alternate. And sometimes if I'm not feeling recovered from like the lifting session, I'll just do two cardio in a row and then go back to lifting. So it's very, um, again, like become a student of your body, stay in touch with it. And if I'm feeling like I just, like I don't want to lift right now, but I feel like hopping on the elliptical, I'll do that. And uh, I just kind of trust that that's right. Do you push yourself during cardio sessions? Like let's say if you're running and you like kind of want to beat your time that you did from previously? I don't even time it personally, but um, I push if I feel like pushing and I don't if I don't. So a friend was asking me that and I was just, he was tr like <laughs> trying to get into running, <laughs> which just involves like going out and running. <laughs> and he was saying like, you know, how, how long do you run for? How do you, how do you, uh, how, what route do you do? Do you time it? Do you measure your heart rate? It's like, I just run. He's like, well, how long for, I, I just run that like route in my neighborhood because that's the route I like. He's like, well, how do you, how hard do you push? Like how, as hard as I feel like pushing. Some days I'm like really feeling good and push really hard. And other days I'm just not. And I, I like just very slowly kind of going through the route. Um, it's all by feel. And I think that's the most important thing to get into going beyond the sort of stage orange, so to speak, physical training attitude, which is just like beat the time, get better progress, 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 but it's more intuitive. And that's yielded better overall results for me, maybe not on the log sheet, but in function for life, way, way better results overall. Sounds actually enjoyable. It's like wanting to work out, like, because you like want to like do like hard things. Is that like a, a bad way to go into it? Totally not. No, I think that's great. Like, that's another really good point. Um, maybe others have experienced this, but when I stopped training for basketball because I quit basketball, I had a really hard time getting back into training. Has anybody gone through that? I was so I felt sort of lost in my training like what am I doing this for and I was kind of back and forth like inconsistent kind of doing various things maybe I was just doing movement practice for a while and finally what took for me was when I focused on getting pleasure out of the exertion of the workout you know like taking pleasure in the actual physical exertion, the, the um, not just the discomfort, but the aggressive nature of the workout. And I later came across this like Andrew Huberman talk where he was speaking about dopamine response and dopamine as it's linked to pleasure. And we're training ourselves or in training ourselves constantly on things that give us pleasure. So if you can link pleasure with effort, it's an easy way, well not easy, but it's a really reliable way to reinforce that pattern. So doing hard things is like, um, I don't know, in my book, that's kind of mandatory. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like relate, you said you like felt lost in your training without, like when you stopped playing basketball and like the first thing I missed was like, you know, like you go get like 500 makes afterwards, like you feel like that, like I got shit done. Yeah, yeah. So like I try to like, that's kind of what I like, Felt like I brought over to the gym. It's like let me just do something hard. So afterwards, I'm like, oh, I got shit done. Yeah. But like, it's not always like the most structured or progress driven. Like, the more kind of it gets like specified to like reps and like moving up weight, like the more kind of interest I lose. So like, yeah. I'm kinda, like stuck with like, well, I want to progress, but like I'm also, I don't know. I think that's a good sign. On honestly, I used to feel like I had to make progress constantly every single workout, and the sort of old heads that I speak to, the guys that have been lifting for decades, the people that have been really training like for a long, long time, a lot of experience, 
all of them say the same thing. They train by feel, they train less than most people think they need to, and they don't push progress constantly because you can't make progress for 20, 30 years in a row. It's just not gonna happen. Like some of them are lifting lighter weight, but they're using their awareness to put more tension on the muscle even though the weight's lighter. Does that make sense? It's, it, it always seems to progress eventually to a more intuitive, feel-based style of training. Not that you don't have your workout designed and, and you don't have a plan in place, but just that you're totally willing to adjust on the fly based on how you feel. And that's what the experienced people that I know train like in, in almost all cases. Hey, it's Taylor. I hope you enjoyed today's talk. And if you did, the best thing to do right now while it's fresh in your mind is head over to deepgame.com and join us in our free masterclass where you'll learn all of the fundamental principles of the part of basketball that's played with the mind. We've had players call this the best hour of basketball learning of their lives, and it's completely free right now. So head over to deepgame.com, join us. Once again, it's totally free, and I will see you there.